So while Space Marines have gained a lot from their new codex, they've also received several nerfs. Today we're going to talk about the ways that certain tactics have got a lot weaker in the new book. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focus 40k channel, where we've been delving into the Space Marine Codex over the past couple of weeks. Overall, I feel a lot of units and datasheets have got stronger, particularly things like Dreadnoughts gaining Duty Eternal, Terminators getting extra wounds, and some of the new units are very strong indeed. Though while a lot has certainly been gained, Games Workshop have managed to rein in a few more of the go-to options that were pretty much auto-includes before the book. In this video, I thought we'd just go over some of the strongest things that Space Marines have lost, and how the changes will impact on the Space Marines going forward. First up, we'll start with one of the more obvious ones, which is the change to Aura Buffs on the core keyword. Now in general, compared with what I was expecting, Space Marines have got away fairly lightly, with the majority of their infantry gaining core. It is still unquestionably a nerf though, plenty of units that would really like to have reroll Auras, such as big tanks or units like Centurions or Invader ATVs, are certainly looking a bit weaker compared with their counterparts. We know that each army is going to get this core change as they go along, which might limit some options. But for a fair while in 9th edition, while none of these changes have happened yet, Space Marines and Necrons might be at a bit of a disadvantage in terms of auras and stacking buffs. I do feel that this might impact Space Marines more than most armies as well, just because they gain so much from overlapping auras of say things like Captains and Lieutenants, which were pretty universal in their application, whether you did want to buff infantry, Centurions, or things like Flyers or Artillery. Next, they've taken really quite a few big hits in the stratagem department, probably one of the biggest losses being Honor the Chapter to Fight Twice, now only being locked to Assault Intercessors, not to every single unit in the Codex. This is actually really quite a big nerf to Marine Melee, and it means that you'll actually have to think about your damage output of your combat units a bit more. If you charged into something scary, then it could be a really easy decision as to whether or not to fight again for how much you want that unit dead and it'd often be a really good option, trading out 3 command points, to have a very good chance of ending a big enemy threat, like a walker or tank. Besides Assault Intercessors, the loss of this option is really quite a decent nerf to most melee units. Only in Death is the stratagem that allows Space Marine characters to fight again when they die. This has also been nerfed, it means that if your character has already fought that fight phase, then it means that they can't fight again. This one's quite a big blow to Smash Captains and fighty characters in general. It meant that you could have quite a low threshold for just charging them into a big scary enemy unit, dealing loads of damage. If they survive the counter-attack, then you could fight twice with Honor the Chapter, and if they die, then you could use Only in Death to deal even more damage. Again, I think that this is going to help people to pick and choose their fights. Next, while the excellent Transhuman Physiology stratagem has gone down in cost to 1 command point, it's now locked out for a lot of units in the Codex, and you can only use it on Primaris units. This one removes a very nice layer of protection from things like Terminators and Centurions, and could also be useful on things like exposed characters. I guess if you want the effect on things like Terminators, you'll have to play Dark Angel's Deathwing. Finally, for the big ones out of the stratagems, the removal of Gravitic Amplification has pretty much removed a lot of the incentive for taking Grav Devastators in drop pods, which were quite a common competitive pick previously. It allowed full rerolls of wound rolls against basically any target, turning Grav Devastators into just an anti-everything unit. And now it's gone, they're going to be much more in their niche of anti-heavy infantry, as opposed to cutting straight through battle tanks and things. Another quite important set of nerfs has been to the Masters of the Chapter, the ones from Faith and Fury, to upgrade your characters. The rewrite has killed a lot of their strongest options, and where they do exist, you'll at least be paying points for them now, rather than paying in command points, which Marines can get quite a bit cheaper now. While Apothecaries have got stronger, and they get that 6 plus feel no pain aura permanently, it now no longer goes to a 5 plus feel no pain on Iron Hands units, which in my mind was pretty much the most obnoxious form of it. A 6 plus feel no pain gives you on average a 20% durability increase, a 5 plus one gives you a 50% one. This one was run in many lists in the LVO earlier in the year, and it basically gave you a nigh unkillable war of intercessors or aggressors, protected both by a 5 plus feel no pain and a 5 plus invul. Don't get me wrong, the Chief Apothecary is really, really powerful, but this has toned down one of the excesses. Another really big one was the Master of the Forges plus one to hit vehicles buff. Standard Tech Marines kind of have a mini version of this now, but before, literally for two command points to unlock Master of the Forge and to give him one Warlord trait, it meant that you could have all your vehicles within six inches of him hitting on a plus one, which was just ridiculously good value for a 45 to 50 point buffing character. Tech Marines can now do this to one vehicle, but they cost significantly more than they did, They've gone up by about 25 points, and I think that this buff, when applied to just one vehicle, isn't so overpowered. It was more the way that you could, say, hover a bunch of Repulsor Executioners or Dreadnoughts within range, and have them all hitting on plus one. 
Finally, the chapter master aura has been nerfed multiple times over. First of all, it costs 40 points rather than 2 command points, which I think is generally going to be a worse deal, as it does mean that you're putting down less troops on the table to start with. It can now, of course, only affect one unit rather than all of the units around you, so again limits the space marine buff castles, and you can only use it on core units now, so no more applying the buff to huge units of centurions or the biggest and the heaviest tanks around. In terms of raw damage dealing and space marine gun lines, this one really is quite a big change. Another couple of powerful options to fall on by the wayside are some changes to chapter traits. In particular, some of the strongest successor chapter traits have been reined in quite a bit, particularly both Master Artisans and Stealthy, the two traits that are often picked in combination, as it just gives you flat increase in damage output and durability. Master Artisans used to allow you to re-roll a hit roll and a wound roll, it now just allows you to re-roll a hit roll, and Stealthy gave you permanent light cover at greater than 12 inches away, and now it's only greater than 18 inches away. I think they're still both potentially useful, but just nowhere near as strong as they used to be. In particular, Master Artisans is far, far weaker than before, losing that second re-roll. The changes also have been passed on to Salamanders and Raven Guard as well. Salamanders just get a single wound re-roll per attack, and Raven Guard still have that 18 inch range the same as Stealthy. It's worth noting that Long Range Marksman also took a bit of a hit as well, now only applying to certain weapons. Overall, I think it means that people will actually be using their chapter's parent trait now a lot more, rather than just using successors. Finally, while Marines aren't short of data sheets, a few of the relatively common picks have taken further nerfs in the codex change. The repulsor executioner has received multiple nerfs, it no longer fires its main gun twice, it lost fly, it's no longer core, and the penalty to charging it has become a stratagem rather than an innate ability. The actual damage of its main guns did go up, but it in no way makes up for losing the ability to shoot them twice. Really quite heavy nerfs on this guy. Next, the Thunderfire Cannon, which had already gone up in points quite a lot in Chapter Approved, has taken further nerfs. You can now no longer fire it twice with a stratagem, and its strength has dropped to a measly strength 4. I really don't think that they're looking quite so good at the moment, the only reason that I would take one would be to use Tremor Shells, and even then the price tag is really quite excessive to get that off, particularly considering you're going to need further command points. Other big losers of the Codex are the Aggressors, whose stat lines and points costs remain unchanged, but they lost all of their special rules, most notably the one where you get to double fire if you remain stationary, which many chapters could absolutely abuse, such as Ultramarines or Salamanders. Honestly, it did put their damage output into ludicrous potentials, with it easily being able to get 100 plus shots out of a single unit per turn, and I can see why they might have decided to rein that in somewhat. They also lost the ability to advance and shoot for no penalty with those Bolt Storm weapons, which doesn't help them either. I did do a recent Math Hammer comparison video between them, Centurions, and Terminators, and they're still not all that bad by comparison, their shooting damage output is still pretty reasonable, but I think they're going to be a lot more focused on dealing damage in melee, rather than just hosing people with 100 plus bullets. The Flamestorm variant going up to 12 inch range means that we might actually see that in play quite a lot more, as you can flame out of coming out of reserve now. Finally, Space Marine Scouts being an elite's choice rather than a troop's choice really does hamper them quite a lot. One of the main draws to them is that you could fill a troop's choice for really cheap compared with the other marine types, which would have been doubly the case with tactical marines going to two wounds and being a lot more expensive. I think that they're not going to be taking quite as much compared with incursors or infiltrators now, who can do both. They tend to be a fair bit sturdier point for point, and of course they have obsec, which is great for securing those early game objectives. So I'm certainly not saying that Space Marines as a faction have necessarily got weaker from this codex, they've really gained a whole ton in terms of datasheet abilities and boosts to certain units, but it is interesting to see that nerfs have fallen on some of the other areas. Honestly, I think that most of these changes are fairly sensible, and hopefully when other codexes get their 9th edition release, we'll see a bit more balance restored between Marines and other factions. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see more videos like this, and if you have been enjoying my videos recently, I'd just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page, which you can find linked to down in the video description. Making all this 40k content does take quite a bit of time, and if you're enjoying regularly, then any support is massively appreciated. Channel patrons get to see certain videos early, there's regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and you're also entered into the regular Auspex Tactics prize giveaway, with the chance to win some big kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.